This beeping sound is a warning that radiation levels are too high. These men are firefighters and they are speeding down this road alongside Chernobyl's nuclear reactors. They're heading towards a forest fire in one of the most radioactive and contaminated areas in the world, the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone in Ukraine. On the 13th of April, a fire broke out here, just 800 meters from the confinement structure protecting the forest reactor, which exploded in 1986 in one of the worst nuclear disasters in history. Ukraine's firefighters agreed to speak to the BBC anonymously, scared of losing their jobs. The dosimeter showed a level 100 times greater than the radiation I was limit. shouting at my colleagues, stop working there, get back. In 10 or 15 years, we'll find out what we've been inhaling. What the consequences will be? It's unclear now. This is deadly serious. According to our news, everything was under control. But how under control was it in reality? The Ukrainian authorities acknowledge there is a problem, but they insist it's under control. Станом на зараз відкритий вогонь у зоні відчуження не спостерігається та полягає в тому, що ситуація там контрольована. But in fact, there were a record amount of forest fires inside Chernobyl's exclusion zone in 2020. Hundreds of firefighters from cities across the Ukraine volunteered to go into the zone to fight the fires. They were sent in with poor equipment, many without any forest fire training, and faced a communication blackout on the ground. I was doing my shift, and the commander came to find out who would help with firefighting in Chernobyl. I told them I would go. Like blind kittens were driven through the woods here and there. This was really scary. Anything could have happened when there. When you go there, the forest, the trees and the air are the same. Nothing tells you that the place is dangerous, only the device beeping. These men stopped forest fires, engulfing the south of the Chernobyl reactors and the nuclear waste storage facilities. But how did the wildfires get this bad? And is this another nuclear disaster waiting to happen? To understand what is happening now, you have to understand what happened in 1986. During the Soviet era, this nuclear reactor near the town of Chernobyl exploded after a safety test went wrong, spreading radiation over thousands of square kilometers in different directions. The firefighters and initial responders died from radiation exposure. It took years to clean up. People of Ukraine and other Soviet countries made huge sacrifices to contain the radiation. But levels remained too high to be safe, so two exclusion zones were created, one in the Ukraine and the other in Belarus. In Ukraine, no one was allowed to leave in or even enter the zone, except the authorities. And that is how it has stayed for almost 40 years. Exclusion zones, a huge area, it's a radius of about 30 kilometers out from the plant, and it's really unevenly contaminated. The radioisotopes that were emitted from the plant that are still there, these long-lived ones like radioactive cesium, radioactive strontium, isotopes of plutonium and, and americium. These radioisotopes can take thousands of years to decay. Without humans, the zone has grown wild and is now one of the most biodiverse areas in Europe. If it was just left undisturbed, the threat would be contained. But something else has been happening since 1986 climate change. And this is a problem because the exclusion zone is almost entirely covered in forest and some of them are radioactive. These pine trees were planted in the Soviet era in dense monoculture plots. This was a way to produce as much wood to harvest as possible out of a small area. When the reactor exploded, these trees absorbed a huge amount of the radioactive fallout. The forest next to the reactor was hit with so much radiation, the trees died and their leaves turned red. It became known as the Red Forest. Climate change is weakening forests like this. They are man-made plantations that can't withstand the dry and hot conditions. 
Dead trees are piling up and piling up. It's called fuel. If you don't clear it, it will literally fuel wildfires. According to scientists at NASA, forest fires around the world have been increasing because of climate change. They've seen the devastation this has caused in places like Australia and California. But fires have also been getting worse in Europe. In fact, the dry, hot and windy conditions, perfect for forest fires, have been increasing every year. This is exactly what's been happening inside the exclusion zone. Scientists have repeatedly warned the Ukrainian authorities about the danger of wildfires in Chernobyl. The government mandated the Exclusion Zone Agency to clear more than 200,000 cubic meters of the contaminated wood each year. But the agency's forces say they are understaffed. In 2019, they managed less than 10% of the quota. Because the climate is getting hotter and drier, this build-up of fuel is dangerous. On April 4, farmers began to burn stubble as a cheap way to clear their fields, and the fires spread into the zone. Despite arresting one man for arson, the Ukrainian authorities failed to stop fires breaking out all over the exclusion zone. It got so bad, firefighters from towns across the country were called in. Most we spoke to hadn't had any training in how to deal with forest fires or in radiation safety, but we'll come back to the radiation. What you need to know at this point is by April the 8th, there were hundreds of firefighters inside the exclusion zone, and they were fighting the fires without maps and in a total communication blackout. <coughs> They told us to go where the fire was. We arrived in the middle of nowhere. There were no radios. We had to pass information by word of mouth. We ended up roaming the woods for four hours. We didn't have any maps. There were lots of bosses. They ordered us to do contradictory things. It was such a mess. If you're sending these men across that fence line with no communications and no map, you are criminally negligent. Information and communication on any fire ground, are, it's, it's key. Somewhere in there, there's got to be an officer that says, stop. We're not sending these men across the line until we have a solid plan of why and what we're doing, and we can look them in the eye and tell them it's safe. This is what the Exclusion Zone Agency said about it. Взагалі всі ці теорії все починається з таких елементарних речей. Я вважаю, що карти не потрібні. Ми вже зробили частину геоінформаційної системи, складовою частиною системи моніторингу та раннього виявлення пожеж. Як довго треба чекати? Ніхто наразі не знає, як правильно її створювати. We also contacted the emergency rescue service, but they repeatedly turned down interview requests. Навіть після тижня там вони не розуміли, хто координує. And to top it all off, because of climate change, many of the swamps inside the zone which firemen rely on for water supplies were dry. These men were fighting a losing battle. Once you get those fuel loads, the poor equipment, I, I just can't imagine it. It's just, you're, you're not going to be able to control some of that stuff. It's just going to get worse. It's not going to get better. By April the 13th, the fires were here in the yard of the electricity substation, only 800 meters from the confinement structure protecting the force reactor. The flames crossed the road, the railway, and headed for the power station. We measured a background radiation of 8 in our truck. Two meters from the pavement, it leapt up to There's 40. There's a concrete fence there, and the wall of fire was heading over that concrete fence. So we went in. Suddenly, we were covered with smoke. We couldn't see anything. It was impossible to breathe. But we extinguished it. We managed to stop it. 
The next day was when the president issued this statement. Станом на зараз відкритий вогонь у зоні відчуження не спостерігається. Three days later, the forest fires were so intense, a smoke plume covered Kiev. Tiny amounts of radiation were measured in the smoke and were even recorded as far afield as Norway. But what about the people on the ground, next to the fires? The firefighters in the zone are exposed to radiation in three main ways. Externally, from the radiation in the contaminated forests around them. Fire doesn't intensify radiation, but resuspends particles and the firemen inhale them in the smoke. They also get radiation through their skin from contaminated clothing and food. Ukraine, like a lot of countries, are uh, signatories to the International Atomic Energy Agency. The Ukrainian authorities would have a duty of care to protect the workers, such as the firefighters, and the members of the public from what's going on within the Chernobyl exclusion zone. The Ukrainian authorities say they provide each firefighter with a dosimeter, which measures their total external radiation exposure. They say the men are also checked as they leave the zone. According to the authorities, limits were not exceeded for any of the firefighters that worked in Chernobyl. But the firefighters tell a different story. Maybe for the TV camera, they did some measurements, but I didn't see any devices. We sat on an armchair, then we were told normal. And that was it. I mean, they had to show less radiation exposure than we really got. I bought fire boots, fire clothes, and I left all of it in Chernobyl because, you know, my safety is in my own hands. I still don't know what total dose I got. These firemen are in the zone for at least a week, sleeping on the ground, digging up the earth, inhaling smoke without respirators. The authorities have yet to find a study which mimics the exact conditions these firemen face. But remember this video? The firemen sent us the readings they took in April. What about the amount they inhale? Well, that's harder. There have been some experiments in the exclusion zone looking at radionuclide resuspension rates in the fire. These fires were not as large and intense as those in April, but it gives some idea of what the firefighters could be prison in. The amount of radiation absorbed by a person is measured in units called sieverts. The international scientific community agrees that below this level 100 millisieverts. It isn't statistically possible to detect increased rates of cancer above the background number of cancers in the general population. Having a CT scan in a hospital would give you a dose of about 10 millisieverts and a transatlantic flight a dose of 0.1. If you go above that 100 millisievert mark, the risk of cancer increases as the dose increases. Here are the levels the firemen who responded to the regional Chernobyl disaster were exposed to. And here are the levels today's firefighters were measuring during their time in the zone. What radiation protection organizations do is that they assume that for every radiation dose, so even the tiny 100 microsievert or 0.1 millisievert dose, even for that we assume that it represents a risk, it just represents a really tiny one. Even if they weren't wearing respirators and they were tackling forest fires for the next 10 years, twice a year, risk from the radiation, I wouldn't consider it to be a significant risk. It's really surprising that despite the chaos on the ground, the firefighters aren't more at risk from the radiation in Chernobyl. But in fact, radiation is a danger to these men, just not in the way we expected. Studies on people who survived the Fukushima nuclear disaster, the communities that lived around Chernobyl and the men sent in to clean it up in the weeks and years afterwards, all showed that one of the biggest public health problems caused by a nuclear disaster is the psychological trauma and stress the fear of radiation causes. Going in year after year to these situations, exposing yourself to what you perceive to be a very hazardous type environment, they will also lead to PTSD, as well as the anxiety, depression, all the other things. 
you do get a little afraid for your family or your own life. Because if anything happens, you'll be left alone with this problem. These thoughts about what can happen in a year or two or three or five or ten, they will become sick because of this or just sick as a result of being there. Ukraine's firefighters think they are being exposed to high levels of radiation, levels that could kill them. And they are volunteering to go in anyway. The Soviet authorities lied to people about the risks they faced in 1986, and the Ukrainians are still recovering from the trauma of those lies and what happened at Chernobyl. It's what makes the present-day lack of care even harder on the firefighters. Every single one of us in this world owes those firefighters in the Ukraine better. And the role the firefighters play is only going to get more important. This area, shaded in red, shows just how much land around Chernobyl's reactors was damaged by fires in the spring of 2020. And wildfires are getting worse and worse in Ukraine. Although the new safe confinement structure at Chernobyl is designed to withstand a fire, that's not something you would want to put it through. There's reprocessing of nuclear waste at Chernobyl and fire has to be something, and I hope it is something, that's high on the minds of Ukrainian authorities. In a country still in conflict with Russia and struggling economically, climate change makes the challenge harder every year. And the safety of Chernobyl once again rests with Ukrainians willing to man the front line. <laughs>